Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening, everyone. The coroner has detailed the harrowing short life of a Launceston baby, saying she suffered cruel and callous abuse. Charlotte Lucan Lay died at the age of 11 weeks in 2016. The coroner today finding her fatal injuries were at the hands of a father who wanted a son instead. This is the man the coroner has found ultimately responsible for an 11 week old baby's death. Gaurav Endlay, in findings delivered today, blamed for the cruel and callous abuse towards his daughter, Charlotte Lucanslay. Coroner Olivia McTaggart found in February 2016, Mr Endlay put Charlotte to bed, but by some unknown act caused her to stop breathing. She was resuscitated and taken to the Royal Hobart Hospital, but died four days later. Medical experts giving evidence didn't accept SIDS was a cause, finding multiple bone fractures which indicated sustained deliberate abuse. The coroner saying the only conclusion available in respect of Charlotte's broken bones and bruising is that they occurred as a result of the treatment of Mr Enlay. The coroner saying Mr Enlay was disappointed his baby was a girl, saying rage towards her suggested a lack of ability to love, empathise and to consider the needs of any other person but himself. Mr Enlay was charged with one count of ill-treatment of a child, but after an examination of the evidence, the Director of Public Prosecutions decided not to proceed with the charge and it was withdrawn in 2017. The coroner didn't make any recommendations. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. He tortured a Launceston man to death after his car went missing. Mark Rodney Jones maintained his innocence over the 2017 murder of Bradley Bruard, but today it took a jury just over two hours to declare him guilty. Once a bodybuilder, now a murderer. This is the Newnham unit where the life of Bradley Bruard came to a tragic and brutal end. On New Year's Day 2017, Mark Jones and Ricky Izard broke into the home, finding the 22-year-old asleep. He was then tied up and waterboarded before Jones repeatedly placed a plastic bag over his head. When he died, his killer tried in vain to resuscitate him. Mr Bruard's body was then placed in an empty beanbag with weights and thrown into Lake Eugenana. The week and a half long trial heard Jones was convinced Mr Bruard had stolen his car, left by the roadside for sale. He spent weeks searching for the victim, even asking his mother for his whereabouts. Yesterday, defence lawyers for Jones said he had never meant to kill, that all he'd wanted was information. They also pointed to his efforts at CPR, but prosecutors argued Jones should have known his actions would cause death. Today, a jury took just over two hours to agree. After the guilty verdict was read out, Mark Jones looked up at the ceiling, occasionally wiping his eyes. The 43-year-old will face court next week for sentencing submissions. Meanwhile, Ricky Izard, who has pleaded guilty to manslaughter, will also face court on Monday. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. In a sudden twist, the Premier has deemed enough is enough in the long-running battle over wages with the public sector, taking an unexpected but significant step forward today. Our political reporter Michelle Wisby joins us now live to explain more. Good evening, Michelle. Just what has the government announced this afternoon? Joey, the Premier has revealed the government wants the battle over wages to be referred to the Industrial Commission for binding arbitration. It comes after more than a year of fighting and back and forth bargaining between the opposing parties. Another negotiation meeting was scheduled tomorrow, but that's now been cancelled. The government saying there is no point meeting if unions continue their industrial action. Instead, writing to union leaders today with draft terms of reference for the arbitration. This means if the process is agreed to, the dispute will be worked out by the independent commission with its ultimate decision binding to all parties. What we need to do is demonstrate to the Tasmanian people that enough is enough um, and we will have this matter resolved independently. If we haven't got a, uh, a dance partner to, to, to dance with, then I guess uh, this does need to go to the Industrial Commission and we need to get an arbitrated decision. Uh, but it's a sad state of affairs and it shows the immaturity of the Hodgman government. 
Unions say they only found out about the plan when the Premier announced it this afternoon. And Joe, they've now been left to decide whether they'll agree to take part in this new course of action. It's full steam ahead for Tasmania's hopes of having its own NBL team, with the league's owner, Larry Kesselman, saying the state could be granted a licence into the competition as early as 2021. The property mogul also revealing his grand plans for the Derwent Entertainment Precinct. If Tasmanians weren't already excited about the prospect of an NBL side, the league's owner says they should be now. Uh, the time is right both for us and for Tasmania, so I'm going in with a very, very positive attitude and uh, I feel very, very confident that uh, it's something that can happen. After entering into an exclusive 120-day negotiation process with the Glenorchy City Council to purchase Hobart's Derwent Entertainment Centre precinct, Kesselman is wasting no time to see his $200 million vision come to fruition. We want to see a vision where the same way as there's a ferry that runs to Mona, that it stops at Wilkinson Point, that people make a day of it, uh, that they can spend the day, whether it be entertainment, food and beverage, going to see a game. It's not just come in, watch a game and leave. And the property mogul and founder of internet service provider Dodo, whose net worth is estimated around $750 million, hopes to see the state granted an NBL licence sooner rather than later. A small chance, not for this season, for the following. Uh, it'll just, everything will have to go in our favour to make that happen. If not, it'll be for the year after. As for a name and ownership structure for the side. The team will definitely not be called the Huskies. Uh, one of my unconditional um, things that I'm, I'm absolutely set on is the team needs to carry the name of the state. So I think the team will actually be called something Tasmania. Uh, we have every intent to talk to the Huskies about them uh, being the potential owners or part owners or operators. Uh, they're already on the ground, they're doing really good work, so uh, we, we want to give them the respect that they deserve. And with a proven track record of putting his money where his mouth is, Kesselman says the project has the potential to move forward with or without the financial support from the state government. The only thing that I'm really looking for from the government is uh, we need to work together uh, to improve the, the deck. Uh, that does need um, work and a little bit of uh, TLC. I've heard anecdotal things of you know leaking roofs and uh, power failures. I'm meeting uh, with them next week and we'll see what ask there is of government, uh, how it can support the sport of basketball and indeed other public benefits um, and look forward to that happening. Basketball is a global product and I want that Tasmanian brand to fly proud all, all around the world from Asia to the US um, 12 months of the year. Tom Cooper, 7 Tasmania News. Golfers, walkers, anglers and mountain bikers are all in the sights of a new push to snag more tourists. The advertising campaign titled Unordinary Adventures will target the key groups over the next three years. I certainly think this program is, is a critical one for us in terms of continuing to support the dispersal um, across the state. A lot of these activities are happening um, in regional areas, uh, so this is a really key program for us. Meanwhile, the latest visitor survey data shows tourist spending has reached $2.49 billion in the year to March 2019. A group opposing the construction of a gondola in Launceston's Cataract Gorge has formally launched its campaign. The Hands Off Our Gorge movement says the proposed gondola skywalk will compromise the site's natural beauty while also impacting on local flora and fauna. It's not about floating around in glass bubbles looking through the glass at it. And those people, while they might have a nice experience, it's going to really impact the experience for the, for the community. The proponents of the plan, who also own the Cataract Gorge chairlift, were unavailable for comment. A new Tasmanian hotel is aiming to give guests a clear conscience, along with a good night's sleep. The 18-bed hotel, called Change Overnight, donates a portion of room fees to its eight partner charities. They include Beyond Blue, Act for Kids and the Tasmanian Land Conservancy. So not only is it a great night stay, it's actually a better night's sleep because you're giving back to this world. The hotel welcomes its first guests from next week. A Huon Valley family is looking to raise more than $300,000 to help cure their little girl. Three-year-old Grace Street was born with a rare condition affecting her liver, but a Chicago surgeon nicknamed Superman may be able to help. Meet Grace Street, 
This three-year-old lives an action-packed life, but she's carrying Abernathy malformation. It's a rare condition that leaves her without a portal vein, which cleanses the blood flow between her stomach and liver. Her blood hasn't been filtered, so the toxins are going through her body, to her brain, to the rest of her organs. Grace currently needs medication and regular blood tests to prevent organ failure. Without treatment, her veins and arteries could rupture. However, there's hope, with renowned Chicago surgeon Dr. Ricardo Supernia willing to operate on her, potentially creating an artificial vein. They call him Superman um, because he's corrected and um, fixed a lot of these, uh, these conditions. It's an expensive operation, costing over $350,000. A lot of money, yes, um, but you can't put a price on your child's life. The family set up a fundraising page, which has already raised $20,000. It's backed by a charity helping a friend in need, meaning donations are tax deductible. Natalie says just a small donation will go a long way. Something could happen and the not knowing, um, so as soon as possible we want to get her there. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. More than 200 budding young sporting stars have brushed up on their skills with the nationwide Tennis Hot Shots program heading to Hobart. The primary school students were invited to have a go, regardless of their ability, practising on specially marked out courts. They spent the morning warming up together before taking part in a friendly competition. This inspires the next generation and they're really excited to be here and be part of the, this day. So, yeah, we're really hopeful that we can, we can get some more Tasmanian grown talent. Hoping the initiative could unearth another future world number one. More than a thousand students packed the Derwent Entertainment Centre today to hear from legendary children's author Morris Gleitzman. Mr Gleitzman, famous for the novel Two Weeks with the Queen, talked to students about writing and creating stories. He said simplicity is the key to a good piece of work. Most people who read stories aren't, aren't you know, people who love long words and, and, um, and impressive sort of literary flourishes. They just want a good story. Mr Gleitzman, who was recently appointed the National Children's Laureate, will be in Devonport and Launceston tomorrow. It spends its days roaming through kilometres of stormwater pipes, but today a remote-controlled robot called Stormy had its time in the sun, giving us a glimpse of what goes on beneath our feet. It's a good thing you can't smell your television set because what you're looking at right now is the damp stormwater network deep underground. You're seeing it through the so-called eye of the storm, known as Stormy, the remote-controlled video robot. He's got a pretty tough life. Stormy once found a wombat down there, clearly startling the poor marsupial. But the charged crusader has a job to do, finding blockages and wear and tear which needs to be fixed. Sediment build up, root intrusion that reduces the effectiveness of the drainage network. With its high definition camera, Stormy can give a crystal clear view of some pretty dark and dirty places, although those LED lights can be pretty blinding. Stormy's out in the sunshine today to promote this weekend's Resilient City Symposium, a free public event looking at ways of enhancing Launceston's future. And although some may lament the loss of manual labour to robots, this is perhaps one job few would put their hands up for today. Years ago, people had to go through the pipes and have a look at... And it was not a very pleasant thing, I can assure you, some of the pipes, and some you couldn't fit through anyway. But they have to be reviewed and checked, especially the ones that have been older in the ground for quite some time. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's latest push for its own side in the competition now has a familiar face behind it with one of the state's favourite footballing sons joining the AFL task force. And Nick Reedwalt is adamant the dream will eventually become reality. He's one of the most well-respected and best-known Tasmanian footballing figures of all time and could now prove the state's best hope for finally having an AFL team to call its own. For a long time there have been a lot of excuses, a lot of roadblocks that have been trotted out as to why Tasmania and having an AFL team isn't a viable uh, yes. situation. 
The newest addition to Tasmania's recently formed AFL task force, headed by co-founder of Virgin Australia Airlines, Brett Godfrey, and supported by all sides of government, the St Kilda Great believes the time is now to get serious about the idea, which has been decades in the making. Deliver a business case outlining how the introduction of a Tasmanian team into the AFL would be a great opportunity for the league as a whole. Right. Rather than being a you know a drainer, the, 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 a, a Tasmanian team would actually support the AFL and, I guess, improve or, or increase the, the contribution that Tasmania makes, makes to the league and to the sport in general. And Rewalt isn't the only Tasmanian football identity throwing his support behind the push with former Carlton coach Brendan Bolton also joining the task force in an advisory role. How viable do you think this is? I think it's do you viable. Think it, do you think it's, it needs to be done? I think, I think it needs to be done. It needs to be done. At do we time. need a standalone Tasmanian team? I think so, yeah. I wouldn't be doing it otherwise. To the TSLW and the Launceston Blues will be out to continue their dominance over the competition this weekend following a 13-point win over last season's runners-up Clarence. And star forward Abby Green is confident the side can go all the way in 2019. We've had a good start to the season. The girls are working well together. Hopefully we can um, continue the winning streak but we don't want to jinx ourselves so we'll just keep training hard. The Blues sit on top of the TSLW ladder after recording seven wins from as many matches and take on Lauderdale this Sunday. Despite falling out of New Zealand NBL playoff contention, the Southern Huskies playing stocks have been given a big boost with Adelaide 36ers forward Harry Froling now available to play for the side's final four matches of the season. I'm a, I fit in with most teams, you know, I'm a versatile player, I can, I can shoot the ball, I can play inside, I'm a, I'm a competitor, so I'll be able to play, play however they need me to and, and do whatever they need, so I'm excited to get here and, and hopefully get four wins. The Huskies take on the Taranaki Mountaineers at the Launceston Silverdome this Saturday night. Good evening. Well, winter must be warming right up. Temperatures sat between 1 and 3 above average today. Hobart and Devonport 14, Launceston 15, Burnie a top of 13. The low was minus 4 at Butler's Gorge and Ross, with our high 17 at St Helens. King Island and Friendly Beaches 16, Flinders Island and Grove 15, Lowhead 14 today and Bushy Park 13. Mostly clear skies around the state today. Just a few patches of low-level cloud drifted over the north later in the, later in the afternoon. A thin high-level cloud band is just to our west. More cloud over coastal New South Wales along with southern and northeast Queensland with most of the mainland cloud free apart from southern WA. Tomorrow the high drifts further to the east increasing the northwesterly wind flow over Tasmania. A ridge from the high pushing back through New South Wales over the continent. A cold front moves towards South Australia. Winds, as hinted, will be northerly at 15 to 20 knots, reaching 30 knots over western waters, swells to a couple of metres. A strong wind warning from Tasman Island to Stanley, and we have a small craft wind alert for the central plateau lakes. Hobart starts out at 4 degrees, heads up to 15 and mostly sunny. Tomorrow, mostly sunny for Signet, 15 the top as well, and 13 for New Norfolk. Launceston can expect a high of 15 degrees, morning fog, clearing, 14 the top for Devonport, partly cloudy for Campbelltown and a maximum of 13 degrees. 14 the top for Burnie and partly cloudy, a bit of sunshine for Strawn and 15 tomorrow, Smithton the same and 15 degrees. And St Helens, mostly, su mostly sunny and 15. Swallow to fly, what are they doing around this time of year? 16 for Swansea and Fingal, morning frost and fog, a top of 15 later. On Friday, showers developing over the north and west, but mainly fine elsewhere. Rain across the state on Saturday, tending to showers over the south and southeast. While on Sunday, showers again, clearing from the east for a period. Westerly winds turning northwesterly. 17 in Perth, with a shower and possible storm tomorrow. Mostly sunny weather for Adelaide, Melbourne and Darwin. A shower or two forecast for Sydney and Brisbane. Mostly clear and 7 degrees in Hobart at the moment, 8 degrees in Launceston, partly cloudy in Devonport and 9. Sorry Joe, that fly was big and crunchy. <coughs> Just revolting, thank you very much Merv. That's all from the team for now, thanks so much for your company, have a lovely evening and we'll see you a little later with updates. Bye for now. Great to you.